everybody. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two wide receivers will be looking to be number one targets on the field in today's game. It's Hopkins, it's Texans, going up against Doug Baldwin's Seahawks. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, somewhat surprisingly, the rain has held off. Just overcast skies so far as you get a look inside CenturyLink Field in Seattle. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle with the Houston Texans. And we say hi again, one and all. Brandon Gaughton here as we count you down to kick off. And I turn to my partner, that's Charles Davis. And Charles, I know even a former defensive back like you can admire some of the receivers in the game today. And Larry showed us a couple that are very likely to stand out in this one. Yeah, and it's hard for me to admit that I actually admire receivers. <laughs> but with their acrobatics, with their speed, with their moxie, and the way they go up and get the football, they can change the outcome of a game in an instant. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. Now on the return here, we've got an injured player down there. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. on first down and his first pass is incomplete anytime you throw an incompletion you think boy that's a wasted opportunity don't you yeah because last year they were number two against the pass was this Houston defense and J.J. Watt is back for all of 2017 they'll be that much stronger So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. First carry for Thomas Rawls. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Second down a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. Third play of this opening drive as they're looking at a third and three. They run with a power back. Rawls. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. Well, didn't get it by much, but bottom line got the first down. Avoiding that three and out, how vital is that on the first drive? To me, it's like the first round of a boxing match. You know, it may not mean much right then and there, but you'd rather not lose it, right? So you want to go ahead and get it, kind of establish something early, and hope it can carry through. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now a play fake here on first down. And did he get the feet down? No, they'll say he did not. It's incomplete. So he was past the line of scrimmage when he threw it. And as they say, that's a no-no. Got to be able to understand where you are on the field and not cross the line before throwing the ball downfield. On 
On second down, Lacey. And he'll take it ahead to the 28-yard line. Give him four on the carry there, but that only takes him back to where they started. Third and ten. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Play action. Now Wilson. He's going to sling this deep downfield, and he can't quite intercept it. Zone coverage, free safety was there. Couldn't come up with it, and now it's fourth down. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. Now John Ryan, 12th year in the league, on to punt it away. Back deep for the Texans, Will Fuller. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Texans are going to have the football with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. Deshaun Watson brings out the Houston Texans, and he's already thrown for 15 passing touchdowns following their game last week, the win over Cleveland. That's just 11 away from the rookie record. Yeah, held by Russell Wilson and Peyton Manning. And look at this, three passing touchdowns, three consecutive games. He's the first rookie to do that in NFL history. He's got it going, obviously, in the right direction right now. Makes you wonder, why didn't he start the first half of the first game again? Absolutely. And you know, his head coach in college said, anybody that takes this kid's going to be happy they did. I think Houston's pretty happy. I think they are ecstatic. Now a first carry for Lamar Miller. And he'll power his way up near the 25. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Offensively, here's the lineup for Houston. It's an offense that's really been rolling. In fact, Charles, they set a franchise record scoring 30-plus points in four straight games after doing so against Cleveland last week. Not bad, not bad at all. Quarterback Deshaun Watson, a rookie quarterback, three touchdowns. The three different receivers, right? Send it to Braxton Miller, Will Fuller, and, of course, DeAndre Hopkins. And speaking of Will Fuller, since he's come back from injury, seven catches... Five of them have gone for touchdowns. That's being efficient. That is very efficient. Now Watson underneath for Miller. A pickup of 11 at a Texans first down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. across the 43 extra yards to the 43. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave them with a second and two. Some runs are blocked so well, you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage. The leverage by the offensive line to create space up front, really well done. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Watson. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. A gain of four that time as the drive continues. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often.
Here's the rookie from Texas, Deontay Foreman. And he's out of bounds as he gets this down to the 45. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes, the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there, about to break a big one. They keep it on the ground. This time, it's Miller. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. So the run moves the chains, and here we go on first down. They'll run it again with Miller, and he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And a look at Seattle's defense. Some players may change, some coaches may change, but head coach Pete Carroll is still there, which means that Seattle's defense is always going to be a threat to be the top-ranked defense in the NFL. They ranked number five in 2016, and they continue to do it with a tremendous secondary and great pass rushers up front, able to utilize their skills to create matchup problems for offenses. And on second and 10 now. push his way forward here for a good little game. Five yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a third down. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. Come on, let's go. Out of the gun, Watson. And he finds his man, Griffin. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. Pretty solid start for the rookie here on this first drive, Charles. Able to have some confidence, step it back into the pocket, move around a little bit, find open receivers, and deliver. That just means his confidence is going to continue to grow because he's getting more and more comfortable with each completed pass. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. Let's go! Watson going to give this one to Miller. And he'll take this one down near the 15. A gain of three, second down. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys... Hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Come on, let's go. Come on. To throw on second is Watson. Pass incomplete. He was looking to get it to his running back, Lamar Miller. And it'll bring up third down. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. A nickel look by Seattle on third down. Yep, five defensive backs now. And movement here by one of the Texans up front. In comes the flag. offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Long drive. The defense just cannot seem to catch a break and get off the field. Throwing on third down. Watson. This is caught. And he is going to feel that one. Knocked down hard at the one-yard line. 
They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Almost not fair. The big guy running the corner route, being able to lean and push and get to where he wants. So how do you stop it? A lot of times you want to have a linebacker on him, a bigger body guy who can handle him physically. But a lot of times that doesn't work as well because his quickness often wins the route. Try to punch it in with Miller. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Well, a well-executed blitz, no doubt. Great job by the linebacker. Maybe the quarterback, if he could have seen that, could have audibled there. Yeah, he needed to be in a different play because that one just meshed perfectly for the defense. All the gaps were filled, except for the one the offense really wanted to run through, and that was filled by a big man wanting to make a tackle. And he made a great tackle. Second and goal. Defense digging in again here. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists, and if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. This offense, two for two on third downs on this drive. This the most important of them all, third and goal. Here's Miller, and he's in for the score. Touchdown, Texans. Lamar Miller taking it in from a yard out, and the Texans have taken the early lead. Well, they decided to run it in and got it done on third and goal. A lot of times, that's a passing play. And the kicker, this has to come out for the PAT. He can breathe a sigh of relief as well, right? Although I don't know if he's really breathing a sigh of relief. I think he likes to put three points on his ledger. Extra point attempt to follow here. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. That drive, a long one, spanning 15 plays. And Lamar Miller caps it off with a touchdown run. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded at the two. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. And the Seahawks get ready to trot out on the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. to Rawls. Now it's Wilson. Under pressure and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Christian Covington able to swap him from that defensive tackle spot for a loss of five. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Two 
On second down, Rawls. And he finds enough of an opening to get this one back up to his 20. Five yards will get him back to the original line of scrimmage, but now they're looking at third and 10. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. On third down, Wilson. Pressure comes, and Wilson's going to go down. D.J. Reader with a big-time sack on third down, and it'll be a loss of seven. Well, how about that? A dime set on defense, six defensive backs. None of them blitz. They're just back there in coverage. Defensive lineman gets the sack. That's where the O-line, they go to the sideline, they keep their, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them, right? Yeah, the cameras can't find them, but I know one thing, the O-line coach will. Here's John Ryan now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Taken from just outside the 30. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. The Seattle defense getting set to go. And despite being down on the scoreboard, this unit, they've had some big-time hits. Sort of like us at practice the other day. <laughs> I saw you take a running start at that blocking sled. You took it down. <laughs> Bounced off like a rubber band. No, no, not at all. But you're exactly right. They are doing their job, but they want to add takeaways to it. You need to have more of those to go along with the big hits we're seeing. By the way, when I tried that and I bounced back, I noticed that you laughed with everyone else. You, did, you didn't try to get in my corner. No, no, no. Someone had just told me a joke on the other yeah, side. Right, I missed right. that. Totally Let's missed go. it. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. And he's across the 43 extra yards to the 43. And a solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. That run right there was an offensive line coach's dream, wasn't it? Guys picked up all their assignments, created a nice gap for the running back to get through, pick up seven yards. Yeah, he's probably chortling on the headset right now, saying, we got it going, boys. Let's keep it going. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Come on, let's go. Right right to throw is Watson. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. The Texans on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. Here it's third and three. Come on, let's go. Five, nine. Five, nine. Now it's Watson. A bootleg. And this is going to be incomplete. Oh, man. For him to be that wide open and drop it, sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And, yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. Here now, Shane Leckler, 41-year-old punter, to kick it away. Back deep for the Seahawks, the all-pro returner from 2015, Tyler Lockett. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to head back onto the field. And this is their third drive right now, maybe not about points, just about getting something. They haven't gotten a first down yet in this game. It's a mental barrier you don't think about until you go a couple of drives without getting a first down. Then all of a sudden it looms big. It gets harder and harder to actually attain that first first down. Very tough spot here for the offense to start. Come on, come on. 
They start on the ground with Rawls. And a nice pickup as this one gets them to the 10 yard line. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. We talk about setting a tone or beginning a drive. That run was absolutely textbook. <laughs> I'm telling you, partner, now they're not just thinking about an easy drive. They're thinking about maybe taking it downfield. Now yeah, started at their two. Now they've got a heavy amount of breathing room. Before they can run another play, the clock hits triple zeros. And time is up on the first quarter. 7-0 is our score. We'll be back to Seattle right after this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside my broadcast partner, Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon hits the Seahawks with a football to begin quarter number two. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. Stay on the ground. Rawls again. And they'll bring him down right around the 13. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook. Go play action. Toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down. Keep the sticks moving. First, again, it's Rawls, and he'll get this one up to about his 14. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That was a really nice play, to be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Second down, here's Wilson. And his throw's going to be incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. The Seahawks on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and nine. From the gun, it's Wilson. And this is caught by C.J. Procise. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They give him a gain of 37. Now, that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. Down, this is Rawls. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Getting out a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. on second down and he's going to be sacked they sack him back right at the midfield stripe Christian Covington 
busting throw to get him for a loss of six. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. The Seahawks on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and 16. From the shotgun, Wilson. He finds his man, Baldwin. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. First down, Wilson. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he works it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. Call it a three-yard gain, and it'll be second down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes that's quite a surprise to a guy playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. Attack. It's Rawls. A nice little juke. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And he's got about five yards as he's taken down right at the 25. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. Here it's third and two. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. False start, offense. So that one will be accepted. play drive to this point. So here's play number nine on third and seven. Out of the gun. Here's Wilson. And this one is incomplete. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. So on fourth down, Pete Carroll is going to call out his field goal unit. It'll be a 47-yard attempt from the left hash.
And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. the made field goal Walsh back out to kick it away this is taken about seven yards deep and he will be brought down here at about the 17 yard line offense coming back out for Houston you and I have had discussions about this offense and how potent it can be with Watson but it might need to be potent given all the injuries on defense. Yeah, that's a good point, but we weren't even sure that this offense would be this high-powered, were we? Rookie quarterback in Deshaun Watson. We thought they had the right defense for him to play, right? Because you had the number one ranked defense in the NFL last year. J.J. Watt, Whitney Merciless, Brian Cushing, none of them in the lineup right now. So you're right, that offense has had to change up and become the, t the, the driver of this football team. Watson on first down. His throw incomplete. Well, Charles, let's take a step back from this game for a second. We're six weeks into the NFL season. Super Bowl predictions. What do you have? I go back to preseason. We had a little chat about it. And, of course, we both said, hey, let's go out on a limb and pick some wild ones. And, of course, that meant you took. Yeah, I took the Falcons and the Patriots really out on a limb. Yeah, and I took the Patriots and the Packers and did the exact same thing. We both kind of went chalk across the board on that one. But now that we're six weeks in, what are you thinking? Yeah, I've got a revision. I'm going to go Browns 49ers. I love it. Now, <laughs> it's going to be a bowl. Yeah. Maybe, not super Maybe not super in this year. But they're not mathematically eliminated. No, but Who I you mean, take it? listen, Green Bay now might not have Aaron Rodgers yeah. the rest of the way. New England struggling on defense. Okay, if we're going to take a little bit of a revision here, let's go with the Kansas City Chiefs coming out of the AFC and coming out of the NFC. Somehow, defense finds its way through. Seattle struggles their way in and gets it done. Now a first down throw, Watson throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking there for Bruce Ellington, and that'll bring up second down. Well, let's go league-wide for a second, Charles. Kansas City losing to Pittsburgh, so no more undefeated teams remaining in the NFL. The 72 Dolphins can celebrate once again. I wonder if they got caught off guard a little bit, that it happened this early, because some years, they almost go to the wire, don't they? In this case, have we're at the halfway mark. And the celebration has already begun for that team. I guess the closest was Lamar Miller. He's at the 40, the 20, 10. Touchdown, Houston. Lamar Miller with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Texans will extend their lead. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on, just think about halftime. If, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. A try here for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. Just a four-play drive that time. And Lamar Miller caps it off with a touchdown run.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Doug Baldwin and company getting ready to go again on offense. With them losing here in the second quarter and his limited productivity so far, you'd have to think they're going to try to look to him a little bit more, right? I would guess you would start to see maybe some quick screens, some hitches, anything to get the ball in his hands quickly and let him try and do some damage after the catch. Or maybe just flip some formations and keep him isolated where it's more of a one-on-one -on -one route and get the ball to him. I say just four verts, right? Hey, why not? Four <laughs> verts, one of the best routes in football. Hard to cover each guy all the way along the route. So far, just one catch for him. This is Rawls. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. I if they want to start getting back into this game, it behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Wilson now off the bootleg. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Zach Cunningham. Coming hard on the blitz, he dumps him for a loss of eight. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Wilson of the Seahawks looking for something big following the sack. It's third and long here. Now Wilson operating from the gun. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off near the 29. And they'll have the ball set up in the red zone at the 16-yard line. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot. And now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. And we focus on Lamar Miller as he heads back out there and gets set to go again on offense. He's in a zone, second quarter, already closing in on a 100-yard game. And that's the magic number for a running back. Anytime you get to that triple digits, that's all you're looking for. But he's got a chance to really exceed that in this one. Yeah, he does. That, that's been the gold standard for a long time, hasn't it, that 100-yard mark? It really has. And that never has to shift because it's in a game. It's a thousand yard mark. I'm wondering since we've gone from 12 to 14 to 16 games. Maybe we need to up that a little. Out of the pistol look, it's Miller. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. We keep talking about the impact that hybrid players have had on the NFL, those guys who can do multiple things. I think Cam Chancellor fits that perfectly. Is he a safety? Is he a linebacker? No, he's a football player. <laughs> and they love him in Seattle. He's been there ever since he came in the league in 2010. Here we go. One, On second down, here's Miller. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. Only a gain of a couple there. That leaves him needing about seven here on third down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. The Texans on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and seven. Let's go. Here's Watson. He'll be hit and taken down at the 21. Frank Clark with a big-time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Now the Texans are going to call on the field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 37.
And his kick is right there. It's good. And they will stretch the lead now to 17 to three. So after the pick, they can't capitalize for six, but they do get three. And I know in this situation, most of us want to focus on the offense. You know what side of the ball I played on. Let's give that defense a lot of credit, taking it over in a sudden change situation and shutting them down. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. All right, let's shift our attention to Eddie Lacy. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, with well, a conclusion we can draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. The drive begins with a run by Rawls. Finding room at the 30. Avoids him at the 40. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. 31 yards there and a first down. That outside handoff to the left, that play has to warm the heart of an offensive line coach because they controlled the left side where they were supposed to. They didn't allow anything to leak from the back side on the right side of the offensive line either. Well played. Yeah, and it created a big run. one goes nowhere losing yardage on the play back at the 46 that's going to go as a loss of a yard and it'll be second down well forget about finding a lane there he barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Lacey gets the handoff from Wilson. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. That's two really good stops in a row. Back-to-back -back tackles for losses. I mean, let's face it. They are locked in to what they're doing offensively. And now they've earned the right to rush the passer on third down, haven't they? Yeah, and offensively, they're going to have to do something else because the run game, at least on this drive, isn't working. A couple of plays sent them the wrong way, and now they face a third and 14. They go play action now. Wilson. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Richardson. And they'll get him to the ground, but he got all the way down to the 30-yard line. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed-out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route-running savvy. down with Wilson throwing over the middle and it's incomplete he was going for the tight end Nick Vanette that'll bring up second down 
some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all. And I understand why they look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. So second and ten here. To throw again, Wilson. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Larry Ridley in Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Seahawks on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. They're up against a third and one situation. Again, Wilson. And it falls incomplete after almost being intercepted. A pick there would have been great. The good news for the defense now, it's fourth down. But nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first, this one from 38. And Walsh able to convert it as his kick is good. And a second field goal here gets him back with an 11 now. It's 17 to 6. Maybe an anxious moment or two when the ball was on its way, but he does find a way to curl it in. Oh, yeah. That one definitely hugged the left upright, but he got it to go. To the made field goal, Walsh back out to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a couple yards deep, he'll go to a knee. He won't return it. And they'll take it out to the 25. And here comes the Texans now. They've had a very solid first half. And as we near the end of that first half, they're just looking for a little more on top of their lead right now. And when you put together a game plan on offense, you put together what you think is going to be the best possible scenario, right? Hey, we're going to score. These are the plays that are going to do it. But you also put together your counters, meaning after they make adjustments to what you're doing, what do we have to go to next? The adjustment to the adjustment. Exactly. So I can't wait to see if we come out of the half how they're going to go about doing things. Do you just keep running what you ran before, or do you go to your counters expecting those adjustments to happen? Before that, we'll see the end here this first half. Dumps it complete to Miller, and he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Six yards to go here on second down. Come on, let's go. Try and A shotgun snap for Watson. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. The Texans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and six. From the gun, here's Watson. And that is incomplete. This defense can do some more of these types of plays. How about him reading it, driving on the football, and he's right there for the pass breakup.
Here's Shane Leckler now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Returnable for Lockett. So possession goes over here on the punt. And it'll be Seahawk football first and ten. Thomas Rawls getting ready to go here on offense. And I'm wondering if maybe they don't go away from him on this drive a little bit. He's He's been great, but they haven't scored a lot of points. I think they still have to show him as a threat. Make sure he touches it a few times. But as you pointed out, Use him as a decoy a little bit and get the ball in the hands of some other people in order to put more points on the board. But he's done a really nice job of establishing them with his running. Yeah, he's established himself well. Now can they put more points up? On first and ten, it's Wilson. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, Charles, to switch gears, I know we've both seen what the NFL has done the last decade or so for breast cancer and the research and raising all the money and awareness. They're broadening the scope this year with the American Cancer Society with the Crucial Catch Initiative, and I think they're doing a really good job. I love what they've done with that because cancer affects just about everyone in our society but it's all different types. So it's not just breast cancer, which we've done such a great job, and the leagues have done such a great job of illuminating over the years. But now they're saying, hey, a lot of people affected by many different forms of cancer, so they all, do, all have a color associated with them as well. So you're seeing a rainbow of colors that people are now saying, hey, let's, let's bring a little more light to this cause as well. And for more on the Crucial Catch initiative, you can go to NFL.com slash Crucial Catch. Second down, Wilson. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. It'll be a pickup of just two, and they're going to be staring at a third and long here. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right, whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs, in this case, the feet, doing a little toe tap, to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. And now the Texans are going to stop it as they signal for a timeout. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Here's John Ryan now as he's on to punt for Seattle. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Pulled in at the 24. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. There's really no reason to change what they've been doing to this point. They've got the lead. They've looked good this first half. I agree with you totally, and a lot of coordinators, play callers feel exactly the same way. Until you stop what I'm doing, why should I make any changes? But there are a few that kind of outguess themselves or try to outguess the opponent, and they try to consider what they would do to take things away <laughs> and go to those plays right away. It'll be fun to watch when they get to the second half to see which way they go. Yeah, but to this point, it certainly hasn't been broke. We'll see if they try to fix anything. And an incomplete pass. 
that'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. That pass going awry gives me a second to fit in a stat that you told me. The three worst rushing offenses in the NFL this past week, Charles, all had 100-yard runners, and they all got a win. Yeah, how about the motivation for a couple of them, too? Adrian Peterson going to the Cardinals, he had a lot to prove, didn't he? He wanted to let everyone know that he still had the juice, and he ran all over Tampa Bay. How about Miami going into Atlanta and upsetting the Falcons, and Jay Ajayi got back on track. But did you have Orleans Darkwell <laughs> of the Giants putting a 100 spot on the Denver Broncos I in Denver I would be and lying. winning? I did not have you that. You did not have no. that. Just think, all three of them won their game. Yeah, if you run the football in the league, you've got a chance to be successful. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes a timeout. And now we're set to get going. The Texans on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and nine. Operating from the gun, Watson, throw left side, complete. That's Griffin, and he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. A pickup of 11 and a Texans first down. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there, and if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit, and that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. down it's Watson that'll be incomplete as the clock will stop with 14 seconds remaining the pro bowler DeAndre Hopkins the intended receiver and now it's second down the best receivers we know always tease their quarterbacks to hey no matter what you do you cannot overthrow me well guess what that's exactly what happened on that play normally they time it up pretty well but on that one he just overshot him Back to the air, Watson on second down. Setting up the screen for Miller. Still fighting for more. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. And offensively, they'll take the timeout with six seconds left in the second quarter. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. his way forward here for a good little game. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the left hash, this from 37. And his kick is good. So we have reached halftime here. It's the visitors, the Texans, out in front. As we will send you eastward to Orlando and Larry Ridley. He's standing by with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Larry. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. 
the Seahawks haven't played their best football and trail because of it. The Texans will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. All right, let's do this. Here's the first half highlights. At the end of the first quarter, Miller's looking for room to run, and he kept off the long drive with a touchdown. The Texans now on top. Midway through the second quarter, Miller's going to break into the secondary, and this four-play drive goes for a touchdown. Texans go up by 11. Final seconds of the half. Miller's wide open here on the catch, and he'll be tackled at the 41-yard line. So that'll do it from here in Orlando for the second half kickoff. Let's get you back up to Seattle and Brandon Guy. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And the Texans set to come onto the field. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. But be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. here on first down and his throw is going to be incomplete and fans a quick reminder from the NFL after nearly a decade of working together in the fight against breast cancer this year the NFL and the American Cancer Society they're broadening the scope of their efforts to tackle multiple types of cancer and you can learn more about the expanded crucial catch initiative and access the defender a new digital tool that provides personalized tips on reducing your cancer risk at NFL.com slash crucial catch. And I applaud the NFL for broadening its, its scope here because cancer affects us all in many different ways, and now everyone will have the ones that they can focus on and be able to support. Out routes are always timing routes, and if the timing's off just a little bit, it can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. The Texans on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and ten. Come on, let's go. One, nine, nine. Out of the gun, Watson. But he finds his man, Griffin. And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. here on first down it's incomplete took a shot couldn't connect Charles that'll give us an opportunity to survey the league-wide landscape I was talking about oh well there's maybe some parity reigning supreme I think there really is guys you had the Giants with a shocking win Falcons with a shocking loss you just never know what's going to happen in this league how about the Chargers beating the Raiders that's another one that's a little bit of a shocker and then finally the last undefeated team Kansas City losing at home to Pittsburgh, which made the 1972 Dolphins very, very happy people. And think of it this way. 
starting their run, right? That 72 Dolphins team, when they had those championships, they beat Kansas City in a big-time playoff game, one of, the, one of the most memorable games in NFL history in overtime. And then they beat Pittsburgh in an AFC championship game on their way to the undefeated season. The Texans on third down. They've had good success. Five for eight to this point. This is third and 11. Watson now to throw. And the Seahawks defense gets to him and they bring him down. Jaron Reed in there to drop him for a loss of 10. And it'll be fourth and long. They were trying to set up that screen, trying to get that screen to formulate. Took too long. Ends up taking a sack, and that leads you to a couple of other questions. Number one, why don't you just get rid of the football near the screen, guys, so that you don't take an interception. But really, the big one, they just took everything away, and he was really kind of flummoxed on that play and ended up taking the sack. Here's Shane Lackler now as he's on to punt for Houston. And a nice special teams job here. This is going to be down inside the 10 at the 7-yard line. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Jimmy Graham, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And we just saw another example. These cornerbacks have played tight coverage all game long. Might start wanting to think about a few double, triple move routes to try and shake their guys free. They have, you're right, they have had no room to breathe. Ten yards still left on second down. To throw is Wilson. Going to throw again. And his throw is incomplete. The intended target, Doug Baldwin. And it's third down. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them. And not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they got a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily, fell incomplete. They go play action with Wilson. And he finds Jimmy Graham. And they're going to get this one up past the 25. The 21 yards there as they convert on third. Jimmy Graham had a really tough injury in 2015 that ended his season. But what a bounce back in 2016. How did he not get any votes for comeback player of the year? I was just going to ask you that. Not that Jordy Nelson wasn't deserving, but 65 catches, 923 yards. So that was the highest total by a tight end in Seahawk history. And I think there's a chance that both of those numbers will increase in 2017. Fresh set of downs here. To throw again is Wilson. And some space here. Whoosh. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. A really good pickup of 28 yards.
So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. Off the play fake to Rawls. Wilson. And unable to connect on the long pass. It falls down incomplete. They have not gotten him going at all. Tried to spark something there with a longer throw. Unable to complete it. But you have to keep trying. He's one of their best playmakers. No matter what it says on the scoreboard, you're always trying to get him the football. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. Wilson to throw again. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Richardson. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. So this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. Got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. So here we go, first and 10 now. From the gun, it's Wilson. And it's the right side here, complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. So how do you beat man coverage? First of all, you want to be a superior receiver, but you know something, that guy is covering you, he's usually pretty good too. So the corner route is usually a great spot to get it done. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Wilson going to give to Rawls. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. Second down following the run. Now it's Wilson. They set up the screen to Rawls. And he'll be taken down at the two-yard line. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. and goal here from the two. On the ground, Rawls. Nothing doing there. They're going to wind up holding him at the two. No gain there, and it's going to set up second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive. Will they be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game? Second down, the ball up. And he's across the chalk into the end zone. Touchdown, Seahawks. Eddie Lacy taking it in from two yards out. And the Seahawks able to make this a close game again. Well, they had their chances in the first half, you remember, but had to settle for two field goals. This time, they come away with six. I think they actually got affirmation about what they were doing by getting a touchdown because the field goals means they got in range but couldn't quite finish it off. This time, they broke through. That's great for the old confidence. And on the sideline, difference of a feeling between three and six, is it astronomical or it, no? It, it, it can be at times, that's for sure. A lot of times, the field goal feels like a disappointment. The touchdown, well, that tells you you're getting it done.
Here's Walsh now to kick this one off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Now the Texans offense, they head back out to do battle here. Certainly want to avoid what they had to do last possession, and that was punt the football, because this, this game's starting to tighten up. In a basketball sense, you think about taking a little bit of the air out of the ball, right? Maybe milk some clock, limit the possessions. In this case, they might want to do the same thing, but control the game offensively, put together some first downs, put together a drive, and keep it away from them. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. Play action for Miller. Now Watson. Looking deep downfield. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. to Miller and he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Came out in a power set but that only served to put more men in the box and guess what if you're going to do that you've got to win up front right your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders they lost all leverage on that play. The Texans on third down, five out of nine thus far. This is third and 11. Come on, let's go. Watch Off of play action, it's Watson. He's going to go for a big play downfield. Oh, incomplete. Nearly the pick they needed. They would have loved one there, but at least it does get them to fourth down. They decided to take a shot and right down the middle of the field. And really, they didn't give it as much time to develop, did they? They want to take that shot somewhere around the 15-yard mark. And the defense able to recover, bat it free. Here's Shane Leckler now. He's been terrific so far. Pressure comes, but it doesn't prevent him from getting off a good one here. And a fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 18-yard line. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards. Well struck. And that will come the offense as they take over. And out now come the Seahawks. Last time they were out here, they had the benefit of good field position, led to a touchdown. This time, they're going to have to work for it. They are, but with that last drive that culminated in a touchdown, I think they carry that confidence into this one. It doesn't matter where you start with the football now. They have to feel great about their opportunity. Wilson to give to Rawls. And they'll blow that one up back at the 16-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Partner, that defensive win reminds me of something a coach of mine used to say all the time. If you really want it, you'll find a way to go get it. And the defense did exactly that. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. They'll hand to Rawls. He'll rumble for about six, up across the 20 to the 22. 
But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted five times in their many chances thus far. This will be third and six. Throwing is Wilson. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. Skirts by him at the 35. And now running right through it. And he's able to get this one up to the 45-yard line. 23 yards on the play. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sense that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. And now a first down following that long game. The busy afternoon continues for Rawls. And he'll take this one up close to about the 45. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. So what will they do on the ground through the air? Let's see, second and nine. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Only a yard in the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. Well, now they're in a spot that every team tells us when we have our production means they don't want to be in third and long, and that's because those back-to-back -back running plays just didn't accomplish a whole lot. And on third and eight, defensively, they're going to beef up the secondary. Six defensive backs. From the shotgun, Wilson. He'll dump it off to Procise. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. It'll be a gain of four. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. Here's John Ryan now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. And now out comes Houston. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage look defensively. Come on, let's go. Brian, 38. They begin with a run by Miller. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking for the guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. So this brings up a second and two. Let's go! Ryan, 38! Watson. Going deep for Hopkins. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit and they may have to change accordingly. Here we go. They'll try to run for it with Miller. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. 
Yeah, they really needed to get something going, didn't they? They had punted on the last two possessions. The running game starting to come to the front for them, providing a nice pickup there to keep this drive going. So the offense has it first and 10. Here's Watson. Caught here by Griffin. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. They get 14 on that one. Good for a Houston first down. We have played three quarters. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. It's the Texans in control of the football and leading this game as well as we start the fourth. Making the give, now Watson. Toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. When we talk with people about what we think the most important quality for an NFL quarterback to possess, what do people usually say? Arm strength, and he showed the arm strength there. Yeah, pretty good bullet pass he threw, but he wasn't accurate, was he? No. Listen, you like mobility, but accuracy, first and foremost, is what a quarterback needs. He didn't possess it on that play. Watson hands to Miller on the draw. Miller with a first down and more. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A big hitter there, a first down gain of 26 yards. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. Watson hands this to Foreman. Heck of a move and then brought down near the 23. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You take in charge. Again, it's Foreman. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Four yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a third and one. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. On third down, Miller. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes this one down to the 15. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. Now this will be the ninth play on this drive. Here we go. Brand 98. Brand 98. Now a 20th carry of the game for Lamar Miller. And he stopped after only a yard, taking it down to the 14. Just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. Here we go. One, nine. One, nine. 
They'll try the air now with Watson. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. Now Watson. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Now they've got to be a little frustrated here to not complete that on third down after having such a long drive going. Hey, you're talking about going over 70 yards on the drive. Yeah, did you say a little frustrated? <laughs> very frustrated. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm very frustrated. There's no doubt about it. They thought they were going to have a chance to cash in in the end zone. Now it looks like it's likely a field goal attempt. And his kick here is good. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. So that's a big one there. It's his third field goal of the game, and a two-score lead's got to feel pretty good right about now. And while they're not free and clear yet, you're right. Now this defense can go out knowing that it's going to take more than one big play to catch them. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Tyler Lockett now with a return. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. But you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. down with Wilson. It's caught outright by Graham. And he's able to get up here to the 26. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. A fake to Rawls. Now it's Wilson. And incomplete on the deep ball. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. They run with a power back. Rawls. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. Third and two, and they ran the ball for only one yard, and everybody's going to scream at the offense. Well, let's give a lot of credit to the defense on that play. Defensive front out leveraged the offensive line. They got more people to the football. Yeah, they won that battle in a big way, and they're forcing a big decision now by the guys on offense. Here's John Ryan now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. Fielded just inside the 20. 12 yards on the return that time. And possession will switch. Hands first and 10. 
The Texans offense now, they get set to head back onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point. The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, you're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that would help him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about <laughs> toe that. Toe <bashed> <laughs> Super tall. <laughs> A first down carry now for Miller. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football. But they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12-yard pickup. I think this defense tired of seeing him run the football, and this D-line probably getting sick of the O-line as well. And as I'm watching this, I'm thinking about a conversation I had with Adam Gase, the head coach of the Miami Dolphins in the offseason. He told me that he asked his running backs each week for their favorite runs. Give me your three top runs. And right now, you're seeing a guy that's probably using his top runs to great advantage in this game. He is in a zone. Now it's Miller. Room to run again. And he takes this one down all the way near the 30. 23 yards on the pickup there and a first. Brendan, every great running backs coach that I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about run them into submission. Uh, hasn't he? You took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. So after that big gain, let's see what else the offense has up its sleeve. On first down, Watson. Quick pitch, complete. It's Fuller. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be brought down inside the 20 at the 19. It's an eight-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys, they're just saying, let's just keep running it at them. We've got them now. They run again with Formas. And he's going to be stopped dead in his tracks right at the 10-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. So the solid run on first, and I would imagine no real hurry to run that second down play. No, it's all in your quarterback now. He's going to keep an eye on the play clock and bleed things down, and he's not going to let the ball be snapped until it's inside three seconds left on the play clock. Unless, of course, you're playing a video game you're trying to run it up on your friend. <laughs> nice touch. Cold-blooded, too. Here's Watson now on second down. That is caught at the seven-yard line. Now the stop will come inside the five at the four. The six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and, take, and go like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. And here we go on first and goal. Go. 
They'll try and run for it with Miller. Diving for the end zone, and the ball's knocked out, and the Seahawks have recovered. In today's NFL, most teams don't have as many goals for the game like we used to have where you checked off your boxes. But zero turnovers, that, that's a universal. And while it won't likely cost them in this game, they're going to regret the fact that they caught one up here. Yeah, their first blemish. They had mistake-free football prior. And we move our focus to Thomas Rawls. And there are the numbers. Got off to that torrid hot start. We thought he was in for maybe a career day. Not the case. No doubt about it. It almost looks like a misprint after what we saw in the first half. But let's give a little bit of credit to the guys on our side of the ball. They went in at halftime, made a few adjustments. And you know what else? They didn't lose their confidence in how their ability to play. Because a lot of times you get beat down in the first half, it gets ugly in the second half. They come out with a new resolve and a renewed determination. They give it to Rawls. And they'll get him down up past the 15. That'll go for a gain of 13, helping big time to get away from that end zone. First down. I guess it's good we can't really read the mind of the defensive coordinator now, huh? Had him pinned back there deep, give up that run. Can't be happy. Yeah, whatever was come, whatever's in his mind right now, we probably couldn't say over the air. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. And Graham's got it over the middle. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Second down now after the pass completion. From the gun, Wilson drops it underneath for Walls. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. the offense lining up first and ten. Now Wilson. Complete. Richardson has it. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. And now a first down following that long game. Wilson to throw. And left side here, it's Graham. 
And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Now Wilson. That's complete. It's Rawls. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. It'll be a pickup of only a yard. And just like that, it's third down. Here's Wilson. And this is going to be incomplete. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash and call it an even 50 yards. And that is no good. He gave it a good run. That wasn't more than a foot or so wide to the left. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up an empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. And now out comes Houston. Getting down to the end here. They have a two-score lead. Barely, but it's a two-score lead. So that probably makes you as a coach feel a lot more comfortable right now, doesn't it, Charles? It does, but it doesn't mean now you go out and run option or some kind of wild double reverse or anything like that. But you do know that if anything does go haywire, you're still in control of this game. I want a double reverse, don't you? <laughs> I'm just waiting for that day where we actually see something like that in this situation. We'll, we'll see what happens here. They'll start out on the ground. It's Lamar Miller. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. And now the Seahawks are going to take a timeout here on defense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Again, it's Miller. Miller with a first down and more. The 30. Touchdown, Houston. Lamar Miller, 52 yards. And the Texans will add on to their lead. Well, it would be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but... I'm looking at your face, and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. make this a three-score game as the lead moves to 17. It only took him two plays there to find the end zone. The last one, the long run, getting him in for six points. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. On the return, the All-Pro two years ago, Tyler Lockett. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Seahawks offense now, they get set to go back to work. They're down big here late. I don't know, you just one last drive here for Pride. 
Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge. It's almost like, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out of here and do something some <laughs> other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. on first down and his throw here is incomplete another wayward pass you know things started out poorly in this game and to be frank they just really haven't gotten much better and all that does is embolden the secondary they feel good about what's going on and they just play better and better unable to connect on the first down pass play now it's second down here's Wilson Throwing again, going to Rawls on the dump off. And he's able to get up here to the 26. And before they can run this third down play, we're gonna get a timeout. As they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. So the offense took the timeout. Looks like they're ready to go as we get set to resume the action. So completion on second down, that brings up third. From the gun, it's Wilson. And that is incomplete. The effort's always going to be there. Everyone's always going to try and make a catch, but underthrown balls, I think, are the toughest ones to come back and get because usually your momentum's going in the opposite direction when you're trying to stop, break, and come back and get it. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And he's got Lockett. And he will have a first down here at about the 40. It'll be a pickup of 13 on the play. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. Offense looking to avoid a third and long. It's second and 10. Again, Wilson. And that is intercepted on the sideline. Wait, no. They'll say no. It was caught out of bounds. So this is just an incompletion here. I think when they get back in the huddle, the question will be, why did you throw that one? The coverage was incredible all over him. The only thing he didn't do after he caught the ball as a defender was get his feet in bounds. That should have been a turnover. On third down, Wilson. Oh, he may have gotten lucky. Tried to dump it off underneath on the check down. Nearly picked. Instead, it's incomplete. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. They're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Texans are going to win the football game. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago.
Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. Only one timeout defensively, so this should just be a simple kneel down. I agree totally. I looked at my time management chart. It says take a knee, victory formation. They just have one timeout left, and that should be all, all she wrote. By the way, it's a good thing you can read that because nobody else can. <laughs> Not with my chicken scratch. Not at all. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. And we're hitting the end of this one, and it looks to probably be the final play. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. From Seattle, so long, everybody.